and suddenly felt like we would possibly not make it to the end of the year and doubted him for about a week whether we were understanding these accounts correctly or not and was it up or was it the formula. And there were emails and there was worry, there was concern, there were meeting with staff and after a while we realized that no matter how we rejig this number, the loss of something called MP, minimum factor income guarantee, would mean for you believe that we had between six to twelve months to buy the So the story went on, and I think that as the story grew, what we learned was this isn't just about the minimum practice income guarantee. It's around the decision which says that when the government is looking at the NHS budget, for reasons that we're not quite clear on, it has decided that the people who see 90% of the patients get something like 6 to 8% of the overall NHS budget. And this affects not only the Belize but every practice in Tower Hamlet, every practice in Hackney, every practice in Newham, and practices across the country. As the story grew and we sort of understood how it would affect different people in different ways, this movement grew as well. We all took different roles. I have to say, my practice has lost the manager. Um, We've not had a practice manager in six weeks now, and if it weren't for everybody, and I think I really need to give a nod to the reception and the nurses and the doctors and everybody who has worked above and beyond their duty to allow us to fight this campaign. This is everyone's campaign, because everyone has put something into this that has led the people that are in this room today to be here. The reason this is so wrong is that what happens with this funding formula is that places where people have less money, places where people don't speak English, places where people are younger and sicker, for reasons that again are not entirely clear to us, get less of the budget than places that have different types of populations. We met with the Department of Health the day before yesterday, and there was clear ministerial support around deprivation, and we heard the words, we do need local budgets. We need to acknowledge that places like East London are different from other places across the country. And we do need more money for people that need to see their doctor more often and do so. For people that don't speak English and need an interpreter and need a longer appointment. When we then tried to translate into pounds what this meant in the evening, it wasn't as easy. So NHS England doesn't seem to have a real grip on the fact that maybe it's not the wisest thing to give 13 million pounds to Amy during the winter and take away seven million pounds from general practice over seven years. Just to be clear, an a &E winter fund would pay for MPIG in the whole of Power Hamlet for 14 years. So it's not that there is no money, it's what are we doing with it or not? And this is how we show our voice and this is how we show the government what we think should be done with this money. The last thing I want to say is the reason this campaign has been so successful is that it affects people immediately. When we say to people, we can't run the nursing home anymore, we can't do sexual health screening, we'll have to stop doing extended hours so we'll close at 6.30 rather than at 7 or 7.30. This is real, it impacts people and they understand what this means. If you work in a practice though and you're not a patient, what it also means is that for us to be strong and to have a cohesive voice, we need to know what we're doing. We've got to run our businesses like very tight shit. And this is the first day I hope that we'll start coming together to build a business that will be louder and bigger than Jubilee Street everywhere. And we've kicked it off, but we want to thank everyone for helping us with the fight. Because not only is it a threat to one, for all, okay. but a victory for one will be a victory for all. So thank you. For